Hi guys, uh, this is uh, a mercury barometer. Um, now belongs to Sophie. It uh, used to be her uncle's and it's being looked after by other members of the family and uh, now it's been passed down to Sophie. And uh, it's had a bit of a hard life. It has been repaired once. It's had a, a new uh, mercury tube put in it, but uh, that, that seems to have got damaged. There's a problem now uh, with the uh, the setting hand. There's a, a little knob up here that uh, turns, and as that turns, so that adjusts the uh, the, uh, the setting indicator there. But there's a slight clash. You see there. So uh, I need to sort that out. Um, but it's also uh, got this uh, little thermometer up here. So this is uh, again a mercury thermometer, and uh, that's got the uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit scales there, and then uh, this. Uh, So uh, this is the mercury tube down there and I'll get you a close up of that and then uh, of course the, the tube runs all the way up to the top. So you can see the vacuum at the top of the uh, tube there and um, there's a little area down here somewhere. Oh, that's a little bead of mercury in a wormhole. So there was obviously a, a wormhole that ran through the wood through there to there and uh, that is a tiny bead of mercury in that wormhole so uh, I think the first thing I've got to do is make uh, a sort of plastic bath to, to put this in because I don't want mercury uh, all over the place. Oh, you can also see there you see the air gap. Get a bit more light on the job. Probably there. So you can see there's an air gap in this uh, tube and uh, there's another one, another air gap. Uh -huh. Well there's one there and another down there. If I could get the light right. Um, but then more importantly there's uh, another air gap down here and then there's something going on here uh, we can see the uh, this that I think is supposed to be silk and that, that goes around twice but it's pulled into uh, a sort of loop around there um, and the Uh, of these two weights, uh, this one moves quite freely, that one's open, uh, that's just an open chamber with a counterweight on, but the one on the left, this one, there seems to be something smashed down there. Um, it looks as though this brass weight is around the, uh, the thread and then I think there may be a, 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 some sort of secondary glass tube in there. I'll see if I can get you closer. So looking uh, here, I'm really not sure what's, uh, what's happening. Let's say this, uh, this weight seems to be free to move on the thread. Then it comes down to this glass part and then it's as if there's another glass tube uh, within this uh, outer glass tube that goes down to the bend. So we've got most of the mercury in the tube. I'm not sure how high the mercury should be in here um, so I need to investigate but I think I've got to find out what's happening with this glass tube. So anyway wish me luck. I've got uh, a couple of bits of wood just uh, held with G-clamp so G-clamp just stops it from moving around and a bit of 
plastic hold in this sheet and I've got the barometer in there so I've got a, a, a bit of a tray to catch any mercury uh, I've got some tissue paper under any sharp bits of the case what I don't want to do is puncture the, uh, the plastic because the mercury should I spill any uh, will find every little hole in the plastic and I don't want to be chasing mercury um, you should look at the safety issues with mercury I'm not going to go through it all here but suffice it to say that uh, it's it's not uh, it's, it's, it's not clever to play with so that little bead of mercury that was in the worm hole here uh, that's now migrated over to there so I'll pick that up in a minute um, but uh, I'm more interested in what's actually going on down here in this uh, in this tube I've undone this wire that was holding that uh, the two tubes so I've got the two tubes separated a little packing piece in between there and I can't see what this is it looks like a separate glass tube uh, what I'm going to do I don't know if I'm getting this on the camera or not I can't pull it out but what I'm going to do is tap it and see if I can yeah it's moving in a fashion anyway let me just see am I getting that now I'll change the position okay I'm recording this because if I do break it at least I can post the video and say this is uh, how not to do it you'll see there's a little glass loop on the end of whatever this tube is I think what I thought was moving is the actual the whole tube actually moving this whole the whole body I was looking at this bit and thinking that that was doing something and that will break it moving it's moving so well that's tight in there that, that can't be good I guess it's just that some rubbish has got in there oh, something's, something's gone with a jolt and there's no no graunching glass sound so that's that's got to be good That's the brass weight. A little bit of mercury uh, escaped, but uh, not enough to be a huge problem. Okay, so obviously that's a uh, a glass tube, and then the end's been. Uh, turned into a loop um, and that is clearly meant to go up and down in in the mercury freely um, looks like we've lost quite a bit of mercury at uh, some stage we say it's been moved in cars so anything is uh, is possible um, I've still got to work out how to move these airlocks you can see this airlock down here and uh, I'm sure that's not going to be easy um, 
so time to do a bit more investigation work and uh, sort of recover this mercury I've got some mercury switches uh, that I can crack open and um, recover the mercury from but I've got to work out how on earth to get that uh, airlock out and um, that's going to be fun what I've got here are some uh, syringes that uh, I uh, had when I, I bought one of these kits to refill um, a printer cartridge and uh, I kept the syringes as I keep most of them and the other thing is I went to the, uh, the doctors for a, a blood test and uh, I asked them if I could have the, uh, the old syringe uh, after the, the test um, and uh, I've actually got a new one uh, there so they will be good uh, and as far as I know that's a, a stainless uh, cannula I made equipment for making these things uh, a bit disappointing that I haven't got any so here we go this is the uh, mercury that I've retrieved out of the case uh, one of my old bosses told me that uh, they used to clean mercury by squeezing it through chamois leather and that seems quite reasonable um, don't know what he was using it for I've got myself into a situation now where this uh, bottom weight sort of moves up and down freely um, if there was some grit or dirt in there I didn't actually find it I always like to find uh, what it is when I'm clearing a fault but uh, anyway that's uh, that's that's clear um, there's some oxidization on the tube there but I'm not going to worry about that at this stage um, now my biggest problem now is uh, these uh, these airlocks um, here or, or the, the several that there are um, so you see I've got to get rid of that or at least I think I have it makes sense that it should go but I'm uh, I'm not sure just what it actually does to the uh, mercury column I guess it's got to be pulling a vacuum there hasn't it so yes it's got to go yeah I think it's got to go um, so uh, I'm in a stage now where um, there's no mercury beyond this point so going up there and I'm just wondering um, oh by the way I haven't got any thinner tube than this and uh, this tube won't go uh, through there but I'm just wondering if I push uh, a nylon fishing line up there with the tube held in the appropriate way whether or not I can encourage air to move to what will be the top of the barometer if I invert it um, and if I have the tube like this um, so on the basis I've got nothing to lose I think I'll try that I've never been fishing in my life but I've got uh, two sizes of fishing line here there's a tiny air inclusion there right uh, at the end of the bulb and um, there's another one there when when the barometer's the proper way up that's actually a gap and again there and then uh, there's a, a, a sort of oh, one centimeter gap there so what I'm going to do is poke the fishing line up and first of all see if I can influence that it'll either do something or nothing this is uh, what I'm going to be using I uh, say I've never done this before so I don't know if it'll work but this is a uh, 55 pound breaking strain nylon line so we're going to watch that uh, uh, air gap there and see if I can do anything see if I can get the nylon in there in the first place I guess no it's not going to go uh, that does not want to go around the, the first bend oh it has 